Hey, everybody. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lynn Clive, the current Mrs. UK World 2021, who will be competing in Mrs. World 2022 pageant to be held in Las Vegas on January 15th. So we're just waiting for her to enter the chat room. Okay. Ooh. Can't see her right now. Let's admit her. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you. Hi. Can you see you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Great to meet you. Likewise. Oh my God. I love your hair. It's just like really Thank you. Like, it's just so just so very silky and, and really black and dark. I love it. I mean, you look very exotic and, and you have incredible amazing eyes too that's the first thing i noticed when i saw your, your photos on instagram this woman has the most beautiful pair of eyes that i've ever seen it's just beautiful oh, very kind oh my god <laughs> I, I love thank you so much <laughs> so how are you are you are you getting ready for new years oh my god yeah it's it i've been so busy i just came back from dubai on christmas eve and it just like you know before you travel for a pageant I'm, I'm in that crazy period of time where it's really exciting very lovely but very busy <laughs> so yeah yeah. yeah yeah so oh my god so la the competition is actually two weeks from now correct yeah 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 i need to fly on the 6th of um january so mm -hmm. a few days and we start on the 9th so as you know, we have a week there, okay. and a fi semi-final on the 14th, and final on the 15th. So okay. yeah, we can say two weeks from now, but in reality, it's about like six days from now. <laughs> so, okay, all right. So you must be really getting very, are you nervous at all? Uh, I, feel, I feel I'm prepared, to be honest, okay. but yeah, I still feel like, yeah, I always think like, have I done that? Do I? Need? So I always have a checklist in my mind. Right, 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 so right. yeah, yeah, it's exciting, a bit of nervous. So yeah, yeah I'm excited. Okay, you. <laughs> you know, we can we can talk a lot about that later. But um, yeah, so the way I met you was that we were um, you were introduced to me by our common friend um, Summer Smith. Yeah. Was incredible wonderful uh young woman and she summer is. um runs her own youtube channel it's called uh, crown sisters yeah and, and then i believe you two met when you judged uh miss universe great britain 2021 True. right yeah. yeah so that must be one heck of an experience but before we talk about that a lot of people have not have not heard of you a lot of people don't know you so True. Would you be kind enough to tell our audience a little bit about yourself, your background, and all that lovely stuff? Uh, well, I will start by, my name is Lynn Clive. I am Syrian British, for people who <laughs> don't know. I'm a trainee doctor, and I'm aiming to be a surgeon. Um, I'm a TV presenter. I have my own TV show, Weekly One. And... Um, I'm Mrs. World UK, going to represent UK in January. Yeah, as we mentioned in about a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because you call yourself professionally as Lynn Hussen, Hussen but you have it, but you actually use Lynn Clive as your pageant name. No, I, yeah, Lynn Hussen before marriage, after oh. marriage, I'm Lynn Clive. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my, my name now in profession, pageant everywhere is Lynn Clive now. It's Lynn Clive. Okay, so yeah. you, you may want to change your uh, Zoom name because <laughs> it still shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, so I, I don't want people to confuse, you know. So, yeah. so her name, her official professional and personal name now is uh, Lynn Clive Hi. because she's married, you're married to a British man and you, yes. and you are a young mother. You gave birth to a beautiful uh, daughter uh, not yeah. too long ago, right? Six months ago. So tonight, in Christmas Eve, Arabella will be six months. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm a new mom and it's a wonderful experience. Oh my God, I'm enjoying every second of having her. Uh -huh. I can imagine. Well, what is, I know babies like cry a lot, especially in the middle of the night. Do you get enough sleep though? <laughs> uh, at the start, it was a bit challenging because I, I had a bit of traumatizing birth and I needed to recover and things. Um, so at the start, because I was knowing her, she's knowing me, so it was a bit challenging, but uh, she's, she's an angel. Like now she's in, in a stage where she sleep more, she's more settled. Um, so it, there are days where she cries and, uh, yeah, but she's just a baby. Mm -hmm. So um, I think because I do so much, I'm kind of used not to sleep much. So <laughs> I didn't really notice much of a difference anyway. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, but I'm sure she's going, she's going to grow up just as beautiful and smart as her mother. I'm sure. And and who? Oh, uh, did you ha did you have any pageant experience whatsoever? Yeah. You... Well. Yeah. In fact, I've done a few. I've done even um, Great Britain, and I've been on the top ten. Uh, so I did the Miss Yorkshire, Miss Great Britain, all these fashion experiences help me to be to prepare now for uh, Mrs. World. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a very passionate girl, so it's definitely not my first. <laughs> okay. But what prompted you to um, enter Mrs. World? Well, um, it's not, as I said, it's not my first passion. I'm very into pageant industry. Mm -hmm. um, well, pageant is all about celebrating women, I think. Women with purpose. Every woman in the pageant have something unique and special and pretty about her. But because we, we you, I feel like uh, pageants can be used as platforms for us to pass on our message to in, in terms like nationally and internationally, such, such as going to Miss World, Mrs. World or Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. um, so um, aside from that, the experience of meeting ladies from all over the world, I'm so excited for it. Um, I'm, I'm a very social person, so I would love to see people from different backgrounds, different languages, different experiences. So in general, uh, Mrs. World is, is a perfect experience for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, how did you prepare for the pageant? Do you have a coach? Yeah, well, uh, my preparation was a bit tricky because I, you know, during lockdown, uh, I did what I can because we've been in and out, especially in right. the UK, we've been yeah. in and out of lockdown quite a bit. And I was pregnant and I gave birth during my preparation for Mrs. World. I also been doing my medical exams uh, during lockdown. So my preparation was had to fit in with all what, what I'm doing. Um, but I feel like I've got myself a chance to prepare well. Um, so for example, if I wanted to go and do some catwalk training, I had to fit with like, am I allowed in? Can I bring my coach in? Can I? So it, it'd been a bit tricky, but um, now I feel like I've done, I've done my best. Uh, and I, it's not only me, it's like uh, an issue effect. It's a pandemic, so it affected everyone. So I've done what I can. Uh, I'm happy with my preparation. I have the best designers who did my dresses. Um, at, yeah. And uh, I ha in terms of passion coach, I wouldn't say like I had a passion coach with being with me through my preparation. No. But um, wh whoever I, I found like have experience, I ask. So I kept asking previous queens, um, even like coaches. So whenever I have a question, I always like, uh, don't fear, I ask. Right. I think, yeah, you know, there is um, the expression that uh, it takes a village because a lot of people think that, uh, one, you know, a contestant can do everything all by herself, but they don't realize that there's an entourage of people or team, you know, that helps this young woman to uh, prepare for the pageant that she's uh, competing in. Well, I'm glad that you're, uh, that, you're, that you're doing okay and that you're taking advantage 
of this pandemic, you know, to to think outside the box because it is very, very difficult. Uh, it's very, very challenging, you know, to be a beauty contestant and actually, you know, compete in a physical pageant across the Atlantic. So congratulations for you for, for, for doing your job. <laughs> Thank good. you so much. I feel like the most, the most thing with I wish I'd done more of is my campaigns because I I chose to raise awareness about mental health issues mm-hmm. and um, I'm an ambassador for equality for a Sona Circle. It's an organization in the UK. So I've done all, all I can. So I, I did my TV show all about mental health. So the last few shows have been all about, I interview professional people, talk about different issues, Talk about things which be, which not in media yet. And I think mm-hmm. it should take a front row. So um, I, I couldn't have a chance of doing any event or public gathering with people. So that's also get affected. But we did in media and social media as much as we can. Mm-hmm. You did mention that you are a television presenter. And actually, yeah. um, I was looking at your um, own show. It's called Beauty Matters where you yeah. are able to, where you get to interview uh, pageant uh, personalities like yeah. beauty queens, uh, national directors, and people in the fashion and beauty industry. And I thought, you know, this is amazing. The name of your channel is at ALB UK TV. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're in London studio. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is, it owned, is it partly owned by Albanians? Albania UK? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So I thought, I know it's, it's a great channel and, um, and you, you actually look very photogenic and telegenic at the same time. So I thought, okay, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. Okay. Now the world wants to know the real Lynn Clive. Describe a typical day in Lynn's life. Well, <laughs> what, time do you, what time do you get up? What do you eat for breakfast? What time do you start working? All that lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is I don't have a typical day. So, yeah, during, during my exam period, um, like my day is all about studying. So, for example, when I was nine months pregnant, I had to study from the point I wake up to the point I go to bed. And when I was after giving birth, four days after giving birth, I had to do six hours medical exam, um, which also wasn't easy. So that's kind of an example of a day. Or if I have a TV show, I need to travel to London because I live in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. I need to travel to London and with my little baby and record my show. Um, and also, I'm a, I'm, I need to fill, fill my role as a mother, as a wife, as like um, take care of my parents. So in general, I really don't have a typical day. I have, I'm working, I'm a full-time mom, uh, I'm preparing for pageants. Um, so I, can, I, I try my best in everything. Uh-huh. So a typical day wouldn't be as like I wake up in this set, yeah, certain time or I sleep in certain time. It's really depend on what I have on my schedule. Okay. I have a, okay, I have this question. How much time do you take to make your face? (laughs) Well, I I, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm super confident, but like to prepare myself to be in your show today, it took me about 40 minutes from the start of having a shower, getting ready and yeah, all That's done. Hair, makeup, and outfit, and everything. And it can it can be quicker. I think it's a skill you learn. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <true. always done. laughs> yeah. So true. in time, it can it can get quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So thankfully, um, I don't I don't take lots of time to get ready. So I'm I'm a bit quick. So yeah, that's, that's a benefit. <laughs> that's great. You know, it's interesting because um, some of the pageant contestants that I've interviewed. In the past, um, they would like post uh, photos of themselves on, on their social media, like Instagram. But when you see them in person, they look not the same person as they put on social Instagram. But when I compare your photos on, on your Instagram and the way I see you now, it, it's exactly the same thing. You're exactly the same woman. You know, you're 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 real. 
basically. So, you know, so I think that's, that's, that's wonderful because, you know, we live like social media, we live, people post uh, images on their social media because they want assessment from their followers. You know, they want uh, likes, they want love, they want hearts and everything, you know, and, and in a way that's sort of not very good <laughs> because why, sh why should you rely on total strangers to validate your looks or to validate your life? I think the only person who should be validating yourself is yourself, you, not other people. So good. No, I definitely agree with you. Uh, social media def definitely has its benefit. So to grow businesses, to get the world to know your purpose, it it's, amazing so we all use social media for like yeah for for positive reasons mm -hmm. i think it has its own negativity and i talked about it on my tv show before it's we have a perfect image we all it's set and we all try to reach every woman is pretty in her own skin and in her own uniqueness of beauty we don't need to be a copy of each other's um, I did some shows about body positivity because also what you see is not always real. Um, there are lots of photoshops and there's lots of Filters. poses yes. you take, mm -hmm. which make you look slimmer or in a different shape or whatever. So I definitely agree with you. Uh, unfortunately, it can affect, especially the new generation and teenager. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to Mrs. World in Las Vegas, you know, you'll be competing with different women from all over the world, from all walks of life. What makes you stand out from the other contestants? What makes you unique from the others? Well, every contestant will be there, will be pretty. That's for definite. And pageants have, have evolved a lot in the last few years, to be honest. They are looking now more for a role model. I've judged Miss Universe Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking in general now about every pageant. They are looking for a, for a lady with a purpose more than how she looks. So physical appearance to one side. They are looking for someone who can represent their brand to the best and represent their country to the best. So I'm going to represent United Kingdom. I'm very proud. Um, I'm Syrian. And I'm going by origin, and I'm going now to represent United Kingdom in Mrs. World. So that's enough example of the diversity of this country. Mm -hmm. um, so back to your question. So we, they are looking for a positive role model, someone who can be a mom, can be a wife, can be a businesswoman, can have a career. Um, someone who have a message and a purpose who can take it internationally and globally and stand in any conference or international stage and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think will make me stand out more. As I've said from the start, they're all pretty and it's not, the judgment wouldn't be about who's pretty. Yeah. It will be about the lady with a purpose and the real role model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I totally, totally agree. And I think, well, I have to be honest, because in the beginning, I wasn't really open to uh, Mrs. Pageants. Um, I, I was also, I was so used to watching unmarried, beautiful women compete against each other. But I never really considered for a moment that uh, pageants for married women would be interesting. But given the fact that uh, more and more younger women, like at least like 35 and below, are getting married and having kids. And not only that, but life expectancy is getting longer every, every year. You know, people are, are living longer every year. And now I understand why certain uh, Miss pageants like Miss Universe or Miss World have raised the age limit uh, to 20, 28 in the olden days, it used to be like 26 and above 26, you're considered old. Okay. So I think, I think yeah. it's good. I think it's good for miss for single pageants to able to uh, allow women older than 26 to be able to compete. Now, what is the age limit for Mrs. World? Do you know? I don't think, uh, I don't know about the age limit, to be honest, okay. but there are ladies from different ages and um, we are all competing together. 
um, the thing about what you mentioned doesn't like how how beauty pageant is evolving. Like mm -hmm. now, it increases from twenty six to twenty eight, and also in their criteria of choosing the winner, it changed a lot. They're looking for the confident lady, for the educated, for the one with the purpose. As I, as I've said, just I want to go back to the question, like what what will set me apart, which. In, in this competition or in any other competition, I'm all for beauty and brain. So looking pretty, take care of yourself, show the world how pretty you are is good. Mm -hmm. But beauty with the brain is what we need for the coming generation, for the generation who's looking into beauty passions. I, I was a passion girl myself, look, sitting on a telly and watching them. So they do, get, they do affect us as little girls growing up. Um, yeah, you can be a doctor and you can be a surgeon and you can be a beauty queen. There's no, there's no limits for, right. for, for what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also another like, example of the evolve, evolving of beauty pageants. I totally agree. Uh, do you have any role models? Um, I don't have a famous role model. I don't have someone who's known as a role model, but I have worked with different charities in the United Kingdom. And I used to work when, whilst I was a student in university, I used to work as an interpreter for the United Nations. So I met lots of people coming from uh, different backgrounds, coming from traumatizing experiences. And I was there to help them, but in reality, they inspired me, they helped me. So looking to be pe seeing people who overcome challenges and difficulties, have determination, wanting to achieve, I've learned from them. So I, I wouldn't, I don't have a role, one role model, but through my life experience, through my academic, academic um, achievements, when I was in uni, when I was working as an interpreter, when I was working in charities, I've met so many people who inspired me and I can call them role models for me. That's good. That's good. What is your biggest fear? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a bit of a tricky question, but I want to be authentic and open as much as I can with you. Uh, my, I, I've started when I came to the UK from zero because I came here uh, eight years ago I spoke no language at all. I spoke no English. I don't know the culture, uh, of course. And, you know, even, even not from zero, it's from under zero, because if you know the language and the culture, you start from zero at least. Um, and I had to do my, my degree and work and be involved in the community and evolve and learn. So I built it all myself. My biggest fear is losing it because I, when I came from Syria, I left my life behind and I came with a bag of clothes on my hand and that's all I had and that's all what I started with. Um, okay. Um, it's interesting because um, I, you know, I, I love, I, I, I follow several YouTube uh, vloggers and one of them is a Syrian uh, who moved to the Philippines. His name is Basil, and his his channel is called The Hungry Syrian Wanderer. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. But, okay, so when he was 18, um, he decided because of, because of the war in Syria, he was forced to move to the Philippines where, where he went to study and whatnot. And he's been living there now for, I guess for eight years, just, just like you, been living in the UK for a number of years. Now he's like 27 and he has over 5 million YouTube followers. He owns several businesses. He was able to buy himself a beautiful house just in case his uh, other members of the family, you know, they all live in France and other parts of the world, you know, yeah. wish to join him in, in the Philippines. But he's, the Filipinos love him because he has, he has become so generous. He has employed uh, Filipino people to work for his businesses. He actually goes out in the street and he distributes money <laughs> to, to the less privileged 
you know, uh, people in, in, in the Philippines. So it's amazing that when somebody, someone, would you, would you consider yourself a refugee? Yes, I came to this country. <clears throat> I came to this country as a refugee. Um, well, I, I, I want to comment about coming to it, to the UK. And um, yeah, I, ca I came here from zero and I've done all I've done because this country treated me as a, as any citizen, as any British person. That's why I decided when I, when I entered Mrs. World, I said like my, my first and main focus and big campaign will be about equality. Because equality for me means equal opportunities for everyone. No one looked at me where I came from, my color, my ethnicity, my background, religion, uh, or like gender or whatever. People treated me, you deserve it, you get it in a way. You deserve to go to university. You deserve to get this type of job. You deserve to be in this career. So people, people gave me what I deserve because I worked hard for it. And that's my, the main reason of my campaign. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter your, your, your geographical area in the world. It's, it's all about you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I came up with equality campaign and I got supported by Sona Circle, which is an international organization to, to spread the world and talk about equality more. And I think it started also to take first row, especially in the last few years. This topic started to be uh, widely talked about in media. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that and I love it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, do you still have relatives in Syria? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. And when was, when was the last time you saw them? Um, I do have rel relatives in Syria. Uh, since I left, I didn't see them. But um, I have relatives who left Syria and now in different parts of the world. That's so cool. we, are, we are still able to meet up. That's good. Um, okay, I like, I like pita bread. <laughs> now, uh, is pita bread Syrian or, or, or Arab? Or both. What? Pita bread. Pita bread. That flat bread. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The ITA. Yeah. <laughs> it's Arabic. I, I will call it Arabic. It's Arabic. Okay, okay. Because yeah, uh, I've, I've heard so many different, like, you know, versions going, is pita bread Syrian? Is, is it Arabic? Is it, is it uh, Iranian? No. Is it Iraqi? But it's just... <laughs> We're talking about the flat bread. It can be bread. Lebanese. Yeah, it can yes. be Lebanese. It can be Syrian. So, yeah, you can call it Arab. <laughs> All, right, good. All right, that's good to know. Now, do you have any guilty pleasures? My guilty pleasure is uh, pastries. I love pastries. <laughs> what is yours? <laughs> I'm talking about food. Yeah. Um, well, I'm someone who loves junk food, to be very honest. I love junk, food. junk food? Mm -mm. I love burgers. I love chips. I love... French fries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of it. Okay. All of it. And I... I can't resist sometimes, so I just a bit of treat to myself after like working hard sometime. Um, I'm not trying to promote junk food here or it's healthy. It's not healthy at all. I no. need to stick to your healthy meals, but um, I, would, I would say food and I would say chocolate as well. So um, these are my guilty pleasures. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I think, I don't know anybody who, who hates chocolate. I think everybody likes chocolate. Yeah. Think, yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite chocolate is the one that has nuts in them. Yeah. I love that, that crunchy feeling when, when I bite chocolate. Oh. Example. I, I, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, <I'm hungry. laughs> yeah, now I'm hungry. Now, okay. I have, a, I have some serious questions. Yeah. What is your position on, um, same-sex marriage? Um, everyone, everyone traveling through life, having their own experience, do they deserve to make their own choices. So it's not my business or anyone's business to tell you who to love or put rules or limits to your life. And that applies in general to everything in life and to uh, apply to my position on same-sex marriage so it's not for me to judge people it's not for anyone else to, to, to judge them 
um, it's it's your life, your experience. Um, I'm I'm not gonna put rules to allow you or not allow you to do what you want. Okay, so let's say let's say Arabella becomes an adult, and one of these days she tells mommy, "Mommy, I'm in love with another woman, and I plan to marry her." How would you react? I know <laughs> I can't be sensitive to many people, mm-hmm. but I would talk about my own personal like about lean myself um i will support my baby girl in any choice she wants to do it any in any choice she wants to make in life what she wants to study her career she wants to go academic like mommy or she wants to be a to go to art and music and dancing or if she doesn't want really to go to university and, and she want to have her own business or whatever i will support my baby in everything she wants in life and i wouldn't put rules on her on who to love or who who to hate or put restriction on her on her mind um that's for definite so it's i'm talking about myself as a parent myself as lean right i think that's a wonderful idea because i think as a parent you can only guide your child uh to a certain you know to live in a very honest and a very truthful, non-judgmental way. And I think, I mean, I'm lucky because both of my parents, I know they're both gone, but both of my parents were very uh, tolerant of me. And, you know, they let me be who I wanted to be, you know. And that's amazing. Yeah, so I think, I think we could use more, uh, you know, tolerant uh, parents these days because, you know, life, life, is, life is all about you know, making your own choices, you know, so that's good. And we only, we only have one life to live and life is too short. So just be happy. Okay. <laughs> be happy. And if I didn't support my baby, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm going to be her, I'm her mom. I'm her, I'm going to be her cheerleader. I'm her supporter. I'm, I'm the one who will clap to any small or big thing she does. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Okay, so Mrs. World Organization, if you're watching this interview right now, consider Lynn as a possible winner because so far she has been very impressive. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Now, okay, so do you do you think it's time for uh, single or married mothers to be able to compete in pageants? that are traditionally designed for single, unmarried women? Uh, in my opinion, pageants are all about inclusivity and empowerment. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be certain pageants changing their rule to include more. I think we, we, can, have, we can have pageants for, to, to, to cater for so many like for ladies from different backgrounds, different ages, different like stages of their life, married, divorced, moms, have a family or not. So I think we, we can have a passion for every woman. And I think nowadays, because I've been doing beauty matters and I'm interviewing people from fashion industry, I can see that there, are, there, there is a passion for every woman now. So I am now in Mrs. World. And if, if, I, do, I don't set the rules for Miss World, but I'm, I'm going on international stage competing with 60 ladies from all over the world for Mrs. World. So it is what suits my, my way, my path, my stage of life. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure about like how changing rules can be or whatever, but I love passion and I'm, I'm big fan of it. I'm supporter. So I feel like we have more pageants now to enter for, for ladies from different stages of their lives. Exactly. Exactly. I think, you know, pageants have become uh, even more popular than before. And I'm glad, I'm glad to see that there are so many different pageants for all types of women, you know, so that's great. Now, what do you like to do for fun besides working? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, for fun, I'm very social person. So I love to go out. I love to meet people. Um, I know lockdown affected it a lot. And because of the restrictions and global pandemic, we couldn't, we couldn't mix as we wanted. Um, we, we, I still meet people like virtually. I still did 
or like um, gathering with friends online and everything. I know it's not the same experience. It's a different quality as well. But for fun, I love meeting people. So social, it's social, um, anything socially attract me. So mm -hmm. definitely. And I would say in general traveling, um, I've started going around the world a lot, a bit more before the pandemic and then it started and it, it put also some restriction on, on me um, going, having adventures and seeing different parts of the world and trying new food, and <laughs> learning about different cultures. So um, yeah, back to your question, it's, it's mainly my social life is, is well, yeah, it's a fun thing for me. Do you cook? Yeah, well, I've, um, yeah, some people don't think like I don't, I don't do any housework or cooking, but I do a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I do cook, I do my housework, and I love it. And I love, I'm someone who like to do things myself. Okay. And so, so you don't, so you don't have a, you don't have a personal assistant, you don't have a maid to help you? No, no, no. I do everything myself. I do everything for my baby, for my family. Okay. Uh, during lockdown, I had a chance of learning new recipes and trying Syrian, new Syrian dishes, which I used just to enjoy and eat. And now I know how to cook them. So, um, you know, I, I, I do everything myself. Okay. Now, here's an interesting question. What is one thing that we would not know about you just by looking at you <laughs> okay yeah that's interesting but let me tell you something when you look at me you wouldn't know that i am a fighter <laughs> <laughs> i have met my husband five years ago in a fight club in romania um, so I do a type of self-defense, uh, it's called Krav Maga, if you ever heard of it. Yes, it's, 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 an, it's yeah. an Israeli uh, martial arts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I attended, like I used to go training in an academy in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. <clears throat> for like a couple of years. Uh, very intensive training, free rules, and we had to go to Romania to do the extreme Krav Maga, they called it. So okay. it is where we train for around 12 hours a day until wow. you are completely exhausted. Multiple attacks and they do scenarios where it's like dark rooms, you have flashes on your eyes, so to distract you, you have a loud, very loud music also to distract you, some smoke um, machine <laughs> to give you some smoke on your face, and then you have multiple attacks. So it has been very extreme, but very beneficial. I loved the experience and I took myself a little bit like out of my comfort zone, let's call it. So for a hobby, I like to collect the bruises. Uh, <laughs> That's so a good one. I, yeah, it's where I met my husband. And uh, the point that he says, the point where he got attracted to me, where I had a bunch, like a proper bunch on my face and it chopped one of my... Um, Upper yeah yeah so okay. i've done i've done that i looked at it i'm like okay whatever and i carried on so he, he so it's so like i'm marrying this woman <laughs> 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 yeah so you uh, would you would you tell by I, looking at me no no because you know what uh you know it's hard to tell because you look you look mm -hmm. very soft you look very you look very feminine and i think but now the whole world knows so if anybody out there is trying to hurt you or attack you, beware, okay? Beware, beware, of, <laughs> beware of Mrs. Clive. <laughs> so she yeah. can be very deadly, <laughs> okay? I, I feel like every woman, and that's what I'll try to teach my daughter as well, yeah. every woman needs to be able to defend herself. Exactly, exactly. Not, not because we are living in a way where everyone attacks everyone, but it just, it's a skill and I think it's important in life not to also to go to the extreme i'm not going to the extreme i love it but um the main idea of entering the club was for me to be able to defend myself it's like empowerment thing for me mm -hmm. okay well that's good to know that's good to know well considering las vegas could sometimes be a very dangerous city but i don't think you you would want to walk alone by yourself you know in the city <laughs> so <laughs> <Las Vegas>. yeah <laughs> now 
Okay, here's another interesting question. If you could be anyone else besides yourself, who would you be? Oh, let me think. I think <clears throat> I think I would like to be an astronaut, like someone who goes to a different planet. <laughs> okay. So, so I would like to have the experience of seeing the magic of a different different planet. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I when was I, I don't think we have ever had a woman astronaut landing on the moon. So you could be the first woman to land on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if I can be someone else, yeah. Yeah, that would be Why that not? Would... <laughs> Why not? As women, we can do anything. Honestly, we we can do anything. We just need to believe exactly uh, in ourselves. Exactly. That's a good one. Now d- about technology, do you think technology is hurting personal relationships? If you asked me before the pandemic, I would say yes. But to be honest, after lockdown and after COVID, I think we had the benefit of um, the technology. It connected, our, it connected us in, with our loved ones. And I'm someone, as I mentioned, I'm a very social person. Um, one of the things which lockdown affected me the most was the mental challenge of not being able to meet people, not being able to go to work, not being able to do my, my clinical trainings, everything like it affected me. Um, so technology helped a lot, even if it is not the same quality of connection uh, and like social connection I want, it's still good. It's still, it still helped. Yeah. Okay. If, let's say, you woke up tomorrow and gained any one ability or quality, what would you want it to be? Uh, That's a fun question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would say flying, but, but it's freezing here and I wouldn't want to be like a few thousand meters in the sky in this cold. So I would choose a different one. I would like to be invis- invisible. So every you guys wouldn't have secrets. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's true. I think, yeah, I think I would want to be invisible too. Yeah. yeah. For the yeah. same purpose. <laughs> For the same purpose, because I want to know exactly what's going on. I want to know the truth. I want to know everything, you know, because because uh, we live, especially especially with you know with, with a pandemic. I think we're living uh, in a world that is there, that there's so f- a lot of deception and deceit and lies, and I want to be able to know exactly what's going on, being an invisible person, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But listen, you can still fly and wear all these wonderful, expensive designer uh, winter clothes and still fly, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like uh, we might get affected a little bit by the weather, but yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Now, um, if you were crowned Mrs. World 2022, what would be the first thing that you will do? It will be the best moment, I think. And I, would, I want to share it with my husband and with my little daughter. So, so is, is, is your, are your husband and your baby traveling with you too? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wonderful. So my, my husband is very supportive. Okay. Um, he always, he's very patient with me. He's a su- big fan, very supportive. Um, I, I want to share this moment with my baby girl and with my husband. I want to hug them and celebrate it with them because um, it's, my family went through it all with me and they're coming. Arabella and Nigel, my husband, are coming to Las Vegas. She's coming to cheer for mommy. So, um, yeah, I, I, the first thing I will want is to share my this amazing moment with them, definitely. Would you ever encourage Arabella to compete in a pageant when she grows up? Um, also, <laughs> a personal answer. I'm very much a pageant girl. And 
as I mentioned before, I will, enc I will encourage Arabella to do anything she chooses to do in life, anything she wants to do in life. I will definitely encourage her to do so. I'm going to Mrs. World aiming to be a role model, aiming to be uh, someone little girls can look up to and think, I think like we, we can do the same. We can have families, we can be doctor surgeons, have our own academic achievements, we can have careers, we can be on tele and media, we can, can do everything we want. Mm -hmm. So I want my baby, I want to be a role model, a positive role model to my baby girl. And if she decided one day to, get, to go into the fashion industry, I will support her all the way through it, definitely. I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing, yeah. Last question, Lynn. Why <laughs> should you be crowned Mrs. World 2022? Go! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, <clears throat> my answer can go on and on and on, but I will try to make it very short. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very resilient person. <clears throat> I gave birth six months ago to my little baby girl, and I'm ready for the challenge to compete in one of the biggest titles, Mrs. World. Um, I'm very determined. I'm very hard worker. And, I'm, and I am a people person. For my purposes, I feel like I can give all I can. Time, effort, all of me. And I, I'm, I'm happy to learn about myself more. And I think during during my title, if I got crowned at Mrs. World, I would be able to learn about the world and what's happening, add um, to it and learn from it. Mm -hmm. And back to my, to my main, main reason, that I can be an example. I can be an example for women to be able to success in different aspects in their lives as a, I want to be a positive role model to my daughter and to the new generation. So that's a summary, but that's what makes me very driven, working very hard and putting my heart to work toward Mrs. World title. Okay, beautiful. That's a beautiful answer. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. World, you saw her answer. <laughs> okay, crown her already. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Now, do you like to play games? Because I do. Okay, we're going to play a game. Yeah. First okay. game is called This or That. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mention two things. And you just tell me what, you're, what you prefer. Ready? Yeah, I'm very ready. I like it. Lynn, what do you prefer? Cake or cookie? Cake. <laughs> me too. Quick answer. Quick answer. <laughs> iPhone or Samsung? Uh, iPhone. <clears throat> Me too. <laughs> lights off or lights on? Uh, on. Really? Ooh, yeah. Interesting. interesting. <laughs> I okay. put all the lights on in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but that must cost you a lot of money, though, to pay for all these electric bills. <laughs> Unless your husband pays for it. <laughs> yeah, he come around. He he follow me in the house, switching <laughs> off lights. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Dog or cat? Dark. Dark, yeah. Mm. Wine or beer? Uh, wine. Wine. Mm. Bikini or one-piece swimsuit? I love bikinis. Bikini, okay. Wait, is, is there a swimsuit competition at, at Mrs. World? Yeah, yeah. There is. Okay, yes. all right. That's it's good. It's one-piece. That's good. Uh, mm. Money or love? Definitely love. Oh, come on. We all need money. Definitely you, love. I you think can, when you, you, can, you can buy you can buy love with money. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me one person who can buy love with money. Just one person in life. Bo Boris Johnson. <laughs> 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 never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, <laughs> yes. Game number two. Tell me your favorites. What is your favorite color? White. What? Okay, white is not a color. You know that. White and black, they're not colors because they're neutral. Okay. Uh, I love red. Red. Okay. Yeah. Do you like pink? Because I, I, the banner in my background is, is all pink. 
Yeah, I love pink. I love pink. It, ma- it matches this dress that you're wearing right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love pink. Uh, in fact, I, I'm very like, I, I love to wear colorful things. But if I, if I will have one favorite color, I think I will go for red. Okay. All right. I like pink too. I think, I think some men would look good wearing pink t-shirts and stuff and pink neckties. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. <laughs> what is your favorite flower? Uh, back to the red, red roses. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Me too. I love red roses. But the only problem with roses is that they're very thorny. So when you hold them, you get bloody hands. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah. So when I remove they look all, amazing. <laughs> yeah, but they, they're gorgeous for sure. For they sure. Are, yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite holiday? Uh, I will talk about the holiday I already had. So I can relate. Thailand. So I love Thailand. I oh, okay. So, I, oh, wait a minute. I was thinking, I was thinking because of you being British, your understanding of the word holiday is vacation. I'm American. My understanding <laughs> of holiday is your favorite uh, special day, like Christmas, Valentine's <laughs> Day. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Christmas, Christmas, for definite. I'm a very right. Christmas person. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so am I. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. What is your favorite music? Um... Well, I, I love listening to Arabic music, to be honest. Uh, and if there is one singer I love listening to, it's called, he called Marwan, um, Marwan Khoury. He does like very romantic songs, piano, classical, yeah, this type of music. <laughs> well, you know, send, send me some uh, information about this person so I can listen to this music. Because I'm, I'm oh, I know, yeah, I know very little about Arab music. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to sort of like, you know, get acquainted with, uh, with, with Arab culture myself. So that's good. Yeah. Send me, send well, me I'm, happy, I'm happy to send you lots about <laughs> Arab culture. <laughs> and I'll, I'll send you the link to the Hungry Syrian War Wanderer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I would love to see. Last one, Lynn. What is your favorite word? It might sound very cliche, but I would say love. Because as a doctor, as a mom, as a wife, as a daughter, it's all, it's all about love. And I believe love can heal you, even physically. So I would say love. You know what? It's not a cliche. <laughs> it, love, we all need love. I, I cannot see the world without love. Love is everything. Love conquers all. Love is the solution to all the problems that we're facing right now. Yeah. So people... Start the new year with loving everybody else. Okay? <laughs> so that's good. And don't take things for granted, especially that's what we learned from the pandemic. Don't take things for granted. Show your love. Show um, if, if it is through text, call, gift, visit, anything. Just show it because I felt like during lockdown, I felt like we took everything for granted and we thought like, yeah, we, we will always have loved people around us until we had to, yeah, not really see them for a while. So, yeah. so it's always good to count our blessings. Yeah, definitely. Right. definitely. Good. Listen, I had a wonderful time. Uh, I didn't want to <laughs> and, and getting to know you. Um, I think the fact that just having spoken with you, I think... Um, it gives me a different understanding or, or rather a, a better appreciation of, of, of pageants for married women because, I mean, I mean, you're so beautiful and you're so talented. You could be competing, you, you could be competing in this universe, you know? So, but just having read your, your, your bio, my God, this woman is amazing. What has she not done? And your story as a refugee from Syria, uh, it's just even amazing and, and, and really profoundly deep. So, and um, I really, really wish you the best of luck when you compete in Mrs. World in Nevada. And I really hope that the judges will, will definitely consider your wonderful, rich uh, bio and, and your background. You're just simply amazing. Now, before I let you go, is there a message that you would like to communicate 
to your followers in Britain and all over the world? Um, you, you, you finished by talking about Mrs. World and uh, puzzles for married women. I'm definitely all for it. It's not even, even if I am competing or not, I'm with women uh, doing whatever they want. So that's a start. Um, and to be able to have a family and have kids and still be attached to, to your dream, that's amazing. So we, we all need to celebrate it. Um, if I can promote Mrs. Ward in, any, in every different platform, I will do so because I had the huge opportunity and pleasure of representing, it's an honor to represent United Kingdom being Syrian in Mrs. World uh, against 60 different countries. I had the opportunity of um, working on my campaigns on things I truly believe in, such as um, equality campaign or positive mental health. I had the chance of standing up and saying, uh, you can be everything you want. It doesn't, don't put label on me. If I am a doctor, I cannot be a model or a beauty queen. Um, so in, if you want to be in media and also be a doctor and be a beauty queen, do whatever you want, do just whatever you want. And if you are putting your heart and doing your hard work, you can achieve it. And don't think any small step you take in your life is not enough because every small step count. We did, I didn't start from doing big steps. I've, st I've started from maybe zero or under zero. And I came so far and I'm willing to go more far. So believe in yourself. I know it sounds very cliche, but every small step count. Work on yourself, educate yourself, learn about yourself. Um, and just, yeah, just do your best. You, and I, I believe everyone is doing amazingly well, even if it is baby or small steps. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Listen, have a wonderful, safe trip to Las Vegas. And I'm sure um, everything's going to be very, very, uh, you know, amazing. And is this your first time traveling to Las Vegas? Yeah, to America in general, it's my first time. Yeah, so I went around Europe. I had some holidays like Thailand and things, but it's my first time to go to America. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super excited to be get, to be going to Las Vegas. Yes. In, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think there are direct flights from London to Las Vegas. Is there going to be like a, a layover somewhere? No, it's a direct flight. Okay, it's a direct flight. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Listen, have a wonderful and safe trip. Good luck to Mrs. World. And we shall be seeing you, hopefully, with that crown on your head. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. We did, we did the hard work. And we just need to yeah, see what, what's going to happen. But um, I'm pleased with all the hard work I've put so far. So hopefully. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, My you're welcome. Meeting you. Thank you you're so welcome. much. You're welcome. So, Critical Beauty viewers, please follow Lynn's journey to Mrs. World. I'm going to put her uh, social media uh, information in the description box below. So, please feel free to follow her and wish her the best of luck. My darling Lynn, giving you virtual kisses. Thank you. <laughs> Thank hugs. you so much. <laughs> and uh, in a few hours, the UK will celebrate. 2022 new years yeah. in a few hours yeah. so yeah so my, my last me my last interview with you so yeah <laughs> you're, you're also my last interview with me for this year so i'm, I'm glad i'm glad that we got connected okay yeah so once this uh once this uh, video is uploaded to youtube i will tag you so you can share the interview with your uh, followers okay so thank you darling good luck thank and you. happy new year happy new year happy new year to everyone Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.